Season's greetings. Thank you for being with Christ Community's downtown campus as we celebrate the birth of Christ. Whether you are a member of our congregation or a newcomer to our church family, we appreciate that you have incorporated this online worship service into your own personal Christmas tradition this year. Now, as we begin the service, I ask that you prepare your heart and mind. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and there was nothing made without Him. In Him was life, and the life was the light of all. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it.
For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince, Prince of, of peace. peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The Lord of hosts will do this. Let's go back to the beginning, when time itself was an infant, before any of this existed. Just an endless space full of empty and God. And in a cosmic series of events, God fashioned the foundations of the earth, drew open the heavens like a curtain, and flexed his vocal cords to form his very first recorded words. Let there be light. And somehow, there was. And not just a flickering, but a flood of light into every corner of the universe. So let the record reflect that light came first. Before anything else, before anyone wept, before anything kept us in sin, let the record reflect that light always wins. But for hundreds of years, the darkness crept back in like it was everybody's business. And it was. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman in the middle of an ordinary night. When God unfolded the light of his word like delicately placed napkins at the dining room table, inviting each of us to take a seat and feast upon a feast that we could not afford if we sold our souls. So let the record show that hope is no cheap thrill, but the father saw fit to fit the bill in the form of a babbling baby, wrapped in rags in a manger, yet possessing all the riches of a world that had waited and waited and waited for him to show up. We were captives, overcome by this incurable cavern, unable to see beyond the shadows of our own sin. We needed him not just to light a torch, but to be himself the flame, the light of lights, fell down from heaven with miraculous momentum. 1,086, 282.397 miles per second to be exact, burning through the black abyss so accurate in his precision, bringing us into a dawn that had yet seemed so distant. This is more than religion. This is the culmination of our very existence. Every what, when, how, and why answered in an instant in an infant. A veritably vulnerable position for a king. But not quite. Because here's the thing about light, the inextinguishable giver of life, powerful, preeminent, constant, and omnipotent, unsurpassable, inscrutable, irreducible, irrefutable, light. Visibly invisible, impenetrably integral, an unfettered and unfathomable phenomenon that scientists have yet to put their finger on. No matter how you see it, y'all, light cannot be defined or defeated, confined or depleted, because it is a he and his name is Jesus. God's iridescent gift to us, sent to us for the redemption of our souls, mysterious yet meant for us to behold, to believe, to become like him in his likeness when the light hits and illuminates the darkness like the flipping of a light switch so the world can see the truth instead of what it thought it knew about Jesus. God's incarnational clapback is the fact that sin had lingered for so long and darkness had become the norm, but no longer will we be scorned by it. So let the record admit that no matter what kind of pit you find yourself in, that darkness is as light to him. And in the end, that light always wins.
There was a man sent from God, and his name was John. He came as a witness, to bear witness about the light, that they might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to those who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but, but of, of God. God. And, the and the word, word became, became flesh and, and dwelt among, among us. And, and we have seen his glory, glory of the one and only, Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who has come after me ranks before me, because he was before me. For from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only God, who is at the Father's side. But now he has made him known.
In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And, and of, of his, his kingdom, kingdom there, there will, will be, be no end. end. Recall the prophecy of, of Isaiah. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has too conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For, for nothing, nothing will, will be, be impossible, impossible with God. God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by man a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and as one whom from men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteem him not. Surely he was borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was, he was pierced, pierced for, for our transgressions, transgressions. He, he was, was crushed for our iniquities. iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. As the prophets foretold, you broke the silence. Born of Mary alone, conceived by the Spirit, from the promise you spoke. Save my soul, Jesus. 
Jesus Christ, no name above. Word of God, you're here with us. He who was and is to come, you are the promised one. Praise his name, sing. First and last, my all in all, I will sing no other song. You are the promised one, only Jesus, only Jesus. Christ, the Lord of all, only Jesus, only Jesus, oh, that name that saved my soul, Jesus Christ, the Lord of In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration of Quirinius, who was the governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, and each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David. Which was called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for him at the end. i
There were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For unto you a child is born this day in the city of David, a Savior to his Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. 
you will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. When children play on Christmas Day and snow is flung, when I feel I haven't had a friend since I was young, when I'm feeling tired of myself and everyone, Lord, remind me, Lord, remind me that the shepherds heard the angels break the silence in the field, that the wise men found a baby and they could not help but kneel That the one who heard our weeping Became a child in manger sleeping Lord, remind me Cause it's Christmas And I want to remember When I sing it with my whole heart sing it to him who's worth a thousand sons and more Stood up proud 
on his own feet that the thief who hung beside you is with you now and he waits for me that the cry of faith so simple is the greatest song in heaven's hymnal lord remind me cause it's christmas and i want to I think this year, more than almost any other Christmas before, I know that we are all longing, deeply longing for something better. We want Christmas, and Christmas is just around the corner. You can almost taste it, and you know what I mean. You've been sitting at work, looking at the clock, whether you're at home or you're actually in an office, waiting for the end of the day, looking forward to accomplishing that last task or sending that final email so you can finally put up that away message and say, hey, I'm not gonna be around for a little bit. And then you get to put your Christmas jams on and hang out and go to sleep. And the only thing that's between you and Christmas is putting your head on that pillow and going fast, fast asleep. But in those moments, it can feel like time is slowing down to a crawl. And this is especially true for kids, I mean, the whole month of December feels like the slowest crawl in the world. Minutes start to feel like hours that start to feel like days, just anticipating Christmas to finally arrive. And it can get so intense, especially on Christmas Eve, the tree with all the presents and the lights, and it can feel so close that you can hardly stand it that you finally, when you get into bed, you're so excited, you just stare at the ceiling and you don't even actually fall asleep, you just black out, right? Because you're so exhausted. That happened to me last year. I mean, when I was a kid, right? Not anymore, that's still, no, it still happens. I'm so excited and so longing for Christmas. And the closer something is, the further it feels away in some ways. The more exciting it becomes, the more your adrenaline starts to pump, your anticipation, it starts to build. It's, it's kind of like that beginning moment of a roller coaster as you're slowly coasting up, looking at the crest of the hill right before the intense drop and your stomach climbs up into your throat. It's getting closer. You can almost feel the nearness of Christmas. And this pattern, frankly, it's all over the biblical story, especially as we look back to what's called the Old Testament, all those scriptures that were written before Jesus came. Here's a couple examples. One character back in the Old Testament by the name of Jacob, he's actually walking around the ancient land of Israel and he falls asleep and he has this vision, this dream of a ladder that goes up into heaven and he kind of wakes up in a cold sweat and realizes somehow God is in this place and he's terrified by the nearness of God. You see it again when Israel comes out of Egypt, right? And they come to Mount Sinai and they experience God's nearness. The cloud around the mountain with the lightning striking and the thunder blaring. And they say to Moses, hey, this is way too intense. You go up in there. We can't do this. And you see story after story. And then by the time you get to the prophets, it's kind of like that advent calendar where you're pulling out a piece of candy Every day, my kids fight over who's going to get that piece of candy. And then eventually, you just want to punch it across the room because you're like, just get on with it already. That's what the prophets are like because over and over and over, they seem to be declaring that God is so close, that he's almost here, that he's coming. And then you finally get to the New Testament and something happens in Luke chapter 2. Finally, God arrives and he does so in the most unexpected of ways. He comes in swaddling cloths. He arrives and sits in a manger as a tiny little baby in a nowhere town in an out-of-the-place province in a bygone empire some 2,000 years ago. And you know what's actually, to me anyway, so shocking about the Christmas story? Really, the whole biblical story? It's not, it's not so much its bigness, even though that is pretty shocking. I mean, you have God, you have devils, you've got angels, you've got messiahs, you've got emperors with all of their egos, you've got nations that are rising and falling, you've got floods, you've got insane animals doing insane things. It's really big to be sure, but the most shocking thing is that this gloriously big story of an extraordinarily big God comes so near. 
And it shocks Mary, it shocks Joseph, it shocks the shepherd. I'm sure it terrified the sheep. But it's extremely near. Just how God is working, how he's at great pains to just push his presence right here in our faces, right in the midst of our lives, in our ears and in our hearts and in our minds. And at Christmas, this time we're celebrating right now, it's this moment where we remember that heaven had never been more close than it was on that first Christmas when the Son of God actually came to earth. I mean, even the angels up in heaven had to come down to earth and marvel at this and say glory to God in the highest. And they sang on, in peace on earth as it is in heaven. Heaven had finally come to earth. And this moment right here, a little tiny baby in swaddling cloths, this is God's crowning achievement. And I mean, think about all the things that God has done. The expanse of the universe, the burning of the stars, I mean, the extraordinary depth, beauty, and complexity of our world's oceans, none of that compares to the smallness of this little child and the nearness of God in a baby, his kingdom breaking in in a child. And you know, the world, it's felt this anticipation before, the nearness of God, God coming down, getting nearer and nearer, closer and closer, the stars aligning to direct the way. But there's going to be, become another moment where finally God's going to come again. There's another Advent coming, another Christmas that's even closer than the first. And it won't just be heaven coming down to earth. It'll actually be heaven and earth becoming one. It's not going to just be a resuscitation of the dead, but it's going to be a resurrection, a new life breaking in where the Lord himself will be our light. There will be no more darkness. There will be no more evening, no more waiting, no more longing. And, and we celebrate all of these wonderful promises of what God will do when he comes again. And we celebrate it all in Christmas, that future day when frankly every day feels like Christmas. And perhaps you feel that longing. I think you do. I think we all kind of do. More this year than ever. Things aren't normal. They're not the way they ought to be. But remember, Jesus is indeed, yeah, he's seated on his throne and somehow by the Holy Spirit, he's actually near us in this moment. He's near us in your apartment, in your living room, in the quietness of your heart. He's right there with us. He hasn't forgotten. And he promises, and this is so important for us to remember this time of year, he promises that it's not going to be like this forever. Every day we're actually closer to that moment. Not just Christmas Day, but actually God become, God returning to us in Jesus. And until then, you know what we do to kind of realize that nearness, to remember that nearness? We join those heavenly, that heavenly accompaniment, the angels, and we join them in singing the songs that they sang on that first night. And before we do that, and we, we return to singing, I just want you to know we wish you a very Merry Christmas. We love you all. And it's a true delight to be together in this way. And so with that, may these truths flow off your lips. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King.
When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told to them concerning the child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds had told them. But Mary treasured up these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. this Advent season, we have remembered the hope, joy, peace, and love of God found in Christ. Tonight, we light the final candle in honor of the Christ child. With the birth of Christ, salvation has drawn near. The God who created the universe has come down into the chaos of our world. The word which was with God at the beginning came down and lived with us, walked among us, and died for us. While we were living in the valley of the shadow of death, the light of new life burst forth. We light this candle for Christ, and we proclaim, Jesus, you are Lord of all. All peace, all hope, all joy, all love, all. Jesus, you are Lord of all. A child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Sing to the Lord, bless God's name. Let the good news of salvation bring from day to day. 
Declare God's glory among the nations, for the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those whom, on whom his favor rests. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round John Virgin, Mother Holy infant, so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly Silent night, holy night, shepherds quake at the sight. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and there was nothing made without Him. In Him was life, and the life was the light of all. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Go in peace to share the light and life given to us by the glorious Son of God.